Hey, welcome back to Cloud Sec. This is the monthly news for Microsoft Defender XDR. This is coming right from the desk of High Creature, one of the product managers of Microsoft responsible for this product set. So everything I'm talking to you is referenceable from this public page right here, and it will be provided in the description of this video. Now, starting off with, of course, general Microsoft Defender XDR news, and the highlight here, of course, is the GA capabilities of Copilot in Microsoft Defender. And this is Copilot for security, of course. So with Copilot for security, you'll be able to leverage uh, that particular um, technology in order to enhance your analysts and your SOC capabilities to find threats uh, quicker, but also to threat hunt and to investigate quicker, right? So there are multiple capabilities, but also on top of the availability of the product itself, there is also the announcement of how from within Defender XDR, you can export investigations uh, for, from Copilot as well. So you can export them via PDF. So what I'm showing to you right now is the public uh, page on what that export to PDF looks like from Copilot for security within Defender XDR. So when you generate an incident report from Copilot for security, uh, you'll be able to essentially click a link here um, to state, hey, I want to export this incident uh, or summary as a PDF. Something, al something else that's also new to the platform in general is the ability for Copilot to analyze files right from within the Defender XDR portal. So you can find the file from your investigation pane. So think of an incident that there's a file and then there'll be a button for you to send to Copilot. So I can actually demonstrate this from my tenant. So this is a demonstration environment of mine where I have Caldera running in my demonstration tenant and I generated this incident right here. Um, so we can see here there's a malware that was identified. This is a unicorn bypass file. It's a PowerShell script that Caldera generates and it, it has identified on my machine that I, I was setting up Caldera and that's fine because what I can see is I found this particular alert. This alert has some evidence, some files that have been identified. When I click on that file, you can see how we have the button for uh, Copilot to analyze this file. So when I send this for analysis in Copilot, and mind you, I do have one uh, security compute unit provisioned for Copilot. This is generating real time for me here. So it will provide me reputation details for that particular file uh, here soon. Oh, also uh, from the Defender XDR news here, we can see that uh, Copilot is also embedded into Defender XDR and can provide device summary information as well. So if I open up the public document on this for this particular item right here. You can see an example of what that would like. So when I find the device in Defender XDR, I will get device summary generated by Copilot as well. So for example, let me jump into my tenant and demonstrate this. So I have here a query in advanced hunting. I'm getting some devices here, for, for example. So let me open one of them. And this is the device page essentially. And I get this summarize button here. So that's the device summary being generated by Copilot. Now, what's so great about this is, of course, I'm generating this device summary from Copilot from within the advanced hunting pane and query. In the original document, you can see that this can also be generated from the device summary page, um, that dedicated page for the device as well. So that's just an added benefit therefore uh, for whoever's utilizing the platform here for your SOC analyst. They can just tap into uh, that information from wherever they are. Have a look at what it says. It says that this device has an outdated component which could be exposed to new types of attack. So that's really interesting because it's that's an insight that isn't obviously um, available here. Of course, I could, I could have a look at um, the device itself. Uh, and it says that, yep, that I could, yep, that I need to investigate what's outdated in this device. So there is an um, immediate benefit of already getting that device summary right from um, Copilot right here. On top of that, there's two new exciting features within advanced hunting. So there is a capability for you to filter for results. So you can right click on the results grid and then create different views for it. And the results limit has been increased from 10,000 um, results to 30,000 results. These are the details for the advanced hunting increase here for up to 30,000 roles, as you can see here for results set. Next up is Microsoft Security Experts. So there's a couple articles here. Um, the first of them is the one that I find more, more most interesting. This is the Frost and Sullivan uh, report naming Microsoft one of the leaders for managed detection response. So this is a 
This is the article from Microsoft detailing what this Frost Raider looks like. So you can have a look at that and of course read Microsoft's own article about it. And I believe you can find the report from here as well. So you'll find the link to this article in the description of this video for your f further perusal as well. Next up, Defender for Endpoint. There are very exciting news for anyone that point Defender for Endpoint for Mac OS. Uh, just a couple weeks back, I was talking to one of the, to a customer and they were rolling out Defender for Endpoint to Mac OS devices. And they were introducing me to uh, some challenges that they, they were having and that's great to see that we now have troubleshooting mode for macOS. So I'm gonna go back to that customer uh, and, and share some of those news. But also they have a built-in scheduled scan for Defender for Endpoint on macOS. So these are great, great ways that you can better control how you are uh, applying your security scans on top of those uh, devices. There's also a new feature for uh, Defender for Endpoint for Linux. This is the offline security intelligence update feature for Defender for Endpoint on Linux, and that's in public preview, right? So the reason for this is because, well, with the absence of offline security intelligence update, that had been essentially a pain point for in one of the top customer asks for the product team at Microsoft. So this feature comes in to, of course, close the gap uh, for that particular need. The customers can get a way to update definitions on the endpoints which are not exposed to the internet as well as exercise better control over the download and deployment of signature definitions update. So great for uh, environments that require and that have a break off from the internet. So more secure environments that are not directly connected to the internet. Next up is Defender for Identity. So there are a couple uh, pieces of news here that I want to share. So there is new read-only permissions for VUE Defender for Identity settings. So this is new. Now you can configure Defender for Identity users with read-only permissions to view Defender for Identity settings. For example, when I look into the required permissions, the Defender for Identity in Defender XDR, we can see here that there's a couple more uh, roles here available to view settings and to read settings in Defender for Identity settings. And there's also new graph-based APIs for viewing and managing health issues. So administrators that are high leverage APIs, they can now view and manage Defender for Identity health issues through the Microsoft Graph API. For the next section, I wanna cover Defender for Cloud Apps. And there are a couple important ones, but just starting with something that is in preview. So there is a preview of Defender for Cloud Apps which now supports an in-browser protection for end users who use Edge Browser, Edge Browser in corporate or business profile, right? So that's important. So what that means is for those users and th that those profiles, Defender for Cloud Apps has an, uh, a specific setting to protect the traffic and reduce latency and improve the user experience to these uh, applications right there. But the big news are these ones right here, right? So Defender for Cloud Apps portal it's now available to all the Defender for Cloud Apps roles. So this is new because there were some roles that were limited and they could not see the Defender for Cloud Apps within the Defender XDR portal before. Okay, so that's important. So now I have a look at what uh, additional roles can now see the Defender for Cloud Apps uh, within the Defender XDR. And the most exciting news for me in my perspective is this last one here. So there's a new anomaly data column within the Cloud Apps events table. With, for advanced hunting. So if you're using advanced hunting and you're querying that specific table within Defender XDR, you now have a couple more columns to help you find anomaly information. So let me jump into my tenant here. And this is uh, me querying this specific table, Cloud App Events. And as you can see, on if I scroll down all the way to the right-hand side here, you can see that we have a couple more columns here, uncommon for user, and last seen for user. So next up is Defender for Office 365. So there are three good articles that you can reference uh, from uh, the, the month of March. I highly recommend you have a look at hunting and responding to QR code based phishing attacks with Defender for Office 365. It's something that I need to go through in details as well, but highly topical and very um, trending topic uh, with a lot of my customers. But also have a look at the new features. So now there's a copy attack simulation training uh, option. So when you're creating uh, simulations within uh, attack simulation within Defender for Office, you can now copy simulations to ease the creation and edit, uh, and edit uh, of uh, simulations that you're creating, for example. Very handy new feature. And attack simulation training is now available for uh, Department of Defense tenants or specific tenants in the US. And lastly, in terms of new features or new um, 
releases as Defender Vulnerability Management, now including uh, generative AI-based descriptions for vulnerabilities. So that just greatly provides greater details for vulnerabilities that are reported in the platform, just for ease of explanation, but ease of use for the SOC analyst who is leveraging that sort of information. So with that, I hope you found this informative. Of course, there's been a lot of news, but there's a lot of blogs and articles that I skip through this kind of videos. If you do want to learn more and have a look at those articles, of course, you can find all, reference to all of them in this the link in the description for this article from Microsoft right here. Hope you find this inter interesting. If you do, leave a like uh, and of course, subscribe if you want to keep following me for more of these in the future. All right, see you next time.